In this video, we're going to take a look at Rolle's theorem, and uh, we're going to see a couple of functions that perhaps it could be applied to. And then if it is, then we need to find all of those values in which Rolle's theorem holds. <coughs> And so if we start off, this is determine whether or not Rolle's theorem can be applied. And if so, find all values of C that make it true. And now uh, some books will go ahead and they'll spell it out and, and they'll take, okay, or they'll say, okay, find all values of C in the open interval where the derivative is zero. I don't want that. I, I want you guys to really think about what it's asking. And so as soon as you see a question like this, rather than jumping right into it. The very first thing is, what is Rolle's theorem? Okay, and there's a, there's a video on this uh, that I've done, as well as, uh, uh, I believe Khan Academy has one as well. But we, we need to identify what Rolle's theorem is. And so, if you have a reference book, or you want to Google it, or, or use Wikipedia, that's fine. Uh, it goes in to say this. If f is continuous on some closed interval a b and f is differentiable on the same open interval a b and <laughs> so these two things have to be true plus this third one and f of a is equal to f of b in other words the y values are the same then there exists exists some value C in A B in that open interval where the derivative is zero. Okay, so if f is continuous on the closed interval and f is differentiable on the open interval and the y values of the endpoints are equal, then there exists. Okay, so we have to check those three things. Is it continuous on the closed, differentiable on the open, and do the y values of the endpoints equal uh, each other? That's the test. So we have to do that first. After that, we'll worry about the second half. All right, so. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, and this first one, a relatively uh, a relatively simple uh, example, the very first thing is, is F continuous? Okay, now, this is a degree three polynomial. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. Now, that means that it's continuous on AB. Polynomials are also differentiable everywhere. So there are, you know, we're not talking about rational functions where you got something underneath. We're just talking about straight up polynomials. They're continuous everywhere and differentiable everywhere. After that, now we'll now we'll be able to work on the third thing. The third thing is we have to look at the y values of each of the endpoints and make sure they're the same. So let's take a look at that. F of one is equal to that's going to turn this first one zero. And zero times anything is zero. And so f of one is zero. F of three, if we substitute that in for x, we can notice at this, at this last factor, three minus three is zero, which zeroes out everything else. Okay, so now, f is continuous on one, three. f is differentiable on the open interval 1, 3. Oops, that's supposed to be more like a parenthesis there. And f of 1 is equal to f of 3. We have satisfied all five. Or I'm sorry, all five. All three of the conditions. So now we may go ahead and say then there exists some value C in A, B where the derivative is zero. Okay, so now let's take the derivative. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I mean, you can use the chain rule or the, I'm sorry, you can use the embedded um, product rule and do it that way. Or you can expand the whole thing and then use the power rule. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the product rule. And so we have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, which is x minus 2. Okay, and now we're on this part here. Plus the derivative of the second. Now we're in the derivative of the second. All right, so now we're working in yellow. We're just going to be working with these two. The derivative of the second is the derivative of x minus 2, which is 1. Plus, oh, times x minus 3. Plus the derivative of the second, which is 1, times x minus 2. Okay, and that was the derivative of, of the first times the second. Ah, uh, second. Ah, uh, uh, see. X minus 3 belongs here. Plus the derivative of the second, which is in yellow for those two, times the first. So this is X minus 1. So it might have been just easier to go with the product or to go with the power rule and expand it out in the first place because we got to do a lot of expansion. So we have X plus X minus 2, X minus 3 is going to give us X squared minus 6X plus 6. Oh, 5x do fall. Ah, apparently I'm having a rough time calculating today. Plus. Okay, so now this is x plus x is 2x times x is 2x squared. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is going to give us a negative 5. And so we're going to get... Uh, we're going to get an x, or I'm sorry, a 2x, which would be negative 2x, and then we're going to get a negative 5x, and then we're going to get a positive 5. And that's out of this second half here. That's out of this part here. That's this part. Okay. All right. And it kind of works out, at least, or at least in principle, because we've decreased the power by 1. And so we want to know where, what values of C make F prime of C zero. And so we want to take zero is equal to X squared plus two X squared is three X squared. Uh, we have negative five, negative five, so those are gone. Negative two, negative five is negative seven. Negative five is negative 12 X. All my X's are gone. And then we have plus 11. Okay, so I need, Two numbers that, oh, this isn't very factorable. And so I'm going to take it straight over and say this is x. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really don't want to do it by uh, by uh, completing the square, I don't think. So I take negative b, which is 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 144, minus 4ac. 12 times 11 is equal to 132 all over 6. It means that x is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 6, which is 12 plus or minus 2 root 3 over 6, which means that this is... Uh, it's up to you how you want to put this, but I'm going to put it as... Um, oh, 2, so I can say it's going to be... 6 plus or minus root 3 over 3. Now, remember, we're only considering 1 to 3. So 6 plus, okay, 6 plus root 3 is just going to be big. Divided by 3, however, so this is going to be, uh, this is slightly less than 2, which makes that slightly less than 8. Divided by 3 is going to make it less than 3. So 6 plus root 3 is in good shape. 6 minus root 3, this is going to put it in the range of 4.5, a, a little under 4.5, uh, divided by 3. And so we're going to have uh, 9 halves divided by 3 would be 3 halves. And so both actually are viable. Just a quick calculation, both are in the interval. 1, 3. And so therefore, or I should say the open interval. Open interval, 1, 3. 
And so both are viable. That means that both answers are good. So let C equal six plus or minus root three all over three. That's it. That's our answer. Okay, so again, let's recap. We tested whether f is continuous on the closed interval. We tested whether f is differentiable on the open interval. And then we found the endpoints, the, va the y values of the endpoints, and tested to make sure they were the same. So we could apply Rolle's theorem. And then all we did was set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x. And that's what gave us our answer. Let's go ahead and stop here, and we'll pick up a, a second video here with this next problem.